there's a strike that's going on right now in Catlettsburg. In Catlettsburg, that's in Boyd County. That's in uh, that's where Ashley Judd's from. Catlettsburg union workers at the Marathon Refinery in Catlettsburg are on strike. The United Steelworkers Union announced a work stoppage at nine refineries in the United States as of 12:01 a.m. local time Sunday. Two Marathon Petroleum Company plants are on strike, the Catlettsburg Refinery and the Galveston Bay Refinery in Texas City, Texas. Workers at the Houston Green Code Generation Facility in Texas City are also listed for a work stoppage. A press release from Marathon said, Petroleum, Petro uh, Marathon Petroleum Companies, Catlettsburg, Kentucky and Galveston's Bay, Texas. Refineries are among those chosen by the USW for work stoppages. MPC has plans in place to ensure the continued safe operation of its facilities and stands ready to continue negotiations at the local level. So this is wonderful. This is great. This is this sucks actually in some respects. Um, it sucks that working class people have to strike in order to get uh, a better deal. But that's the thing. When you politely submit, that will be the level of injustice that is perpetuated upon you. That's Frederick Douglass. And I'll say it again because it's that important. When you politely submit, that will be the level of injustice that is put upon you. And so you cannot put up with anything. You cannot put up with bullcrap. You cannot put up with it because if you put up with it, then they will always, you know. So this is a good thing. I think this is a good development because this is the United uh, Steelworkers Union. The United Steelworkers Union are making a stand. And the good thing about being in a union is that you can be in an, a contract. You get into a contract and it, you're just not an at will employment. If you just, you know, um, may, I don't know, if you just look at the boss wrong and he doesn't like you for whatever reason, then he could just fire you on some trumped up charges and you just have to submit to it. The corporations are strict totalitarian fascist organizations. They are strictly totalitarian fascist. And that's, um, that's despicable. It's despicable how they operate. So good thing about contracts is is that you get a contract, you know, you get a stand up and you say for two years this is how, you know, you're going to get this much wages, you're going to get this benefits, and this is the deal that you get. That's a much better deal than at will employment, the right to work at, for at will employment, the right to work to, you know, to, to get fired, the right to get fired. It's not the right to work, it's the right to get fired. And um, and that's, that's despicable, it's disgusting. Uh, you know, the, it's corporate America, but why can't we do what Germany is doing? Germany is able to do socialism and capitalism uh, better. They're able to do better socialism and better capitalism than Kentucky is able to do. And so Kentucky it has a huge GDP. We have $171 billion in GDP. $171. And that's pretty good. 171, you know, and that the GDP is just producing more stuff. So go out and produce more stuff. If you produce more stuff, then eventually the economy will bounce back. The more stuff you produce, right? So anyways, I think it's disgusting. I think it's disgusting how people treat others. It's not a contradiction. You can make a profitable company and you can treat your workers right. You can make a profitable co um, company that does well but does not neglect human rights. They should not be opposites. They shouldn't be opposites. You know, if you have to dehumanize somebody in order to make some money, then that job should be illegal. If you're not paying a livable wage to somebody to do some work, then that job shouldn't be in place. It, sh it should not be a job. So I hope that the United Steelworkers Union in Catlettsburg, I hope they're successful. And I hope that, you know, this is... Um, it's time for revolution. It's time for revolution. The revolution's already here. We just need to grab it and take it and win it. And so I hope working class peoples are hearing this. Unions are on the ropes right now. There's not many unions. We need a union, a strong union. An employee free choice act. You should have a right to unionize. Talk about right to work. We should have a right to unionize. Right to get fired. I hate how they define these things. The right to work sounds like, oh, that's good. You should have a right to work. It's not a right to work. It's a right to opt out of the unions. So we should have a way to opt in into the unions and pass the Employee Free Choice Act. Obama proposes $1 billion lifeline for parts of Appalachia where the cold jobs have vanished. Harold Leader Bill Estep 
article. Eastern Kentucky and other areas of Appalachia that were hit hard by a sharp drop in coal jobs could get $1 billion lifeline under the budget proposal put forth Monday by President Barack Obama, although the budget faces difficult prospects in Congress. The White House budget includes a proposal for the release of $1 billion from the abandoned mine lands fund over five years for redevelopment projects aimed at improving the economy of distressed coal communities. One example would be planting trees on old non-productive sites that were surface mined before 1977. So anyways, there's a big, um, we have a Democratic candidate right now, Jack Conway, who's running to be governor of the state. And the very first thing that he says when he files a run, they interviewed him, was that he voted for Obama, but then he turned around and he sued him. For some reason, in politics, in Kentucky, you have to throw Obama under the bus immediately. Yeah, he admitted that he voted for him, right? Which is sort of um, saying, pointing out about Alice and how she wouldn't admit to it. But then he says, and then I sued him. Oh, that's great, Jack Conway. What a great Democrat you are. That's that's incredible. That's so amazing. And um, he's trying to triangulate, trying to appear that he's a moderate. And so he's playing politics. He talks about people over politics. He's playing politics. To run, again, as a Democrat in Kentucky, you have to throw Obama under the bus. And so you got to be racist. And then once you've adopted racism, you know, as part of your campaign strategy, it's kind of hard to sort of build up from there. And then I sued him, you know, and then I spit in his face. And then I, I peed in his soup. Is that a good thing? Is that a good thing? Obama's going to go down in history as one of the most successful presidents in American history. There's not a big recession, almost depression. There's not all these illegal wars going on. Well, there are some wars. He's passed more major pieces of legislation since Harry Truman. And so what Obama, Obama has transformed our country already. But I hope that he's able to create a foundation enough to for more changes to happen. So anyways... Uh, Mitch McConnell was talking about coal the whole time, King Cole. But really, when Mitch McConnell talks about King Cole, all he is talking about is William H. Spence. He is talking about the coal company corporations. He's talking about the ones at the top. He doesn't care about coal company workers. He doesn't care about the actual resource, the actual rock of coal. We should nationalize coal. That's our coal, and it should be our coal to begin with. I don't understand why we don't nationalize it. We're a bunch of beggars sitting on a hill of gold. Gaddafi was able to pay his people a lot of money. He was able to pay them off, essentially, to live in that totalitarian system. And you want to talk about totalitarian fascism? The emperor is not wearing any clothes. Education is totalitarian fascism. We live in a police state. We got a war in the streets, war in the Middle East. But there's no war on poverty, but they'll declare war on drugs so the police can bother me. So it's ridiculous how, you know, um, the American political scene has gotten. And it needs my voice. It needs my voice. Uh, just to balance out the conversation. We need to occupy government chairs. We need to get regular working class people into positions of power. And we need to start empowering ourselves. And I'm not for sure what the deal is. Paulo Freire says there's a fear of freedom. Is that what it is? Are we afraid to be free? A free nation, there's going to be friction. But a free nation means that we stay free. We're fighting overseas for freedom and democracy for other countries, and we don't even have freedom and democracy here. Jack Conway has been throwing black and white people into prisons nonstop, criminally. He's criminally throwing people into prisons. It's like, hey, wait a second. Do you have a marijuana joint there? When I'm going to ruin your life, I'm going to grab you, beat you up, assault you, put you in a pen, and lock you away. Forever. Friend of all time. I'm going to ruin your life. And why does he want to ruin, I mean, North Korea, Kim Jong-un, they have a liberal policy of marijuana in North Korea. A liberal policy. Kentucky is more fascist totalitarian when it comes to the marijuana laws, when it comes to they're more totalitarian fascists in North Korea when it comes to the marijuana laws. The education system, they believe in 100% compliance. 100% shut up, sit down, do as you're told. 
And that's not what we need right now. We need a robust middle class economy. We need a robust middle class, working class, poor people. All these people need money. And the way that our economy will be strong is when people get money, they will spend it. You give $1,000 to a poor person, that $1,000 will go back into the economy. You give $1,000 to a bank, they'll keep it in a vault and then say, sit on it. That doesn't do anything for the economy, but does everything for the rich and for the wealthy. So when Mitch McConnell was talking about coal mining and coal and loving coal and everything coal, he didn't give a crap about coal. He wants uh, the coal corporations to do as they like, to do as they please, to pollute as much as they want, to pay union members as low of a wage as possible. And it isn't right. The chickens voted for Colonel Sanders. The poorest state in the union voted for the richest senator. Why would they do that? Does that make any sense? So all that talk about coal and here Barack Obama is going to put a billion dollar lifeline to Appalachia. It's not the first time Barack Obama has helped poor Kentuckians. Barack Obama got lots of road work, lots of uh, projects, lots of schools, lots of lunches. But specifically, two times we were declared an emergency situation. There was a big ice storm and then there was a, a snowstorm. I think it's 2009, 2011, somewhere around there. So for two years in a row, a lot of people had their electricity turned off. Their power turned out, turned off. They had no heat. They had no way to survive. And a national emergency was declared by the governor and then by the president. And then we got a bunch of extra funds. National Guard went around everywhere to make sure everybody was okay. That was thanks to Barack Obama. So, you know, a bunch of hypocritical fools out here. Owsley County. Owsley County is the poorest county in the entire country. And Owsley County has the greatest welfare recipients. And it's the most Republican. What a bunch of hypocrites. What a bunch of two-faced hypocrites. They're taking Social Security. They're taking entitlements. They're taking welfare, government money. And then they turn around and pretend like they ain't. We're not having a, an honest conversation. Mitch McConnell has totally dictated this thing with uh, socialism. Socialism. That's not socialism. Government giving money out. That's not socialism. If, you, if that's the name of socialism, then the banks are socialized. But that's not socialism. Socialism is when the workers control the factories. And that's what should happen with coal. Throw these William H. Spences, these King Coal Barons, to the curb. Throw them out. Kick them out. We, you're no longer running here. The workers can, are the ones that do all the work anyways. Without the workers, the entire world would stop running. The workers could control the coal mines. And the workers should do that way. In solidarity. We can do this ourselves. We don't need some master to tell us what to do. Hierarchy destroys relationships. And so we need solidarity and love and compassion. And the workers can't control the factories. That's socialism. But we're not even talking about workers controlling factories. We're talking about whether or not the government gives money out. So, Owsley County, when you get your food stamps and your Social Security and your WIC and your LIHEAP and your... Every other program out there that you get, it's not because of the Republicans. Obamacare helped a half a million Kentuckians. Uh, 600,000, more than half a million Obamacare is a good thing for ha over half a million Kentuckians. Unfortunately, the poor don't vote. And the young don't vote. We have low voter, voter turnout rates. We have a uh, failing democracy. And why do we have a failing democracy? The school system. The school system does not teach democracy. They do not teach us to tolerate different opinions. They do not teach us that the majority get their way, but the minority get their say. And the minority should always get their say. The majority is going to get their way. So what does it hurt? When you deprive a person to speak, you're also depriving the listener of perhaps listening to a good idea. In the great pool of ideas, the best ideas should succeed. And so if I'm faced with a problem, I want all the options on the table. And then I want to pick the best one. But if you don't have a democracy that, you know, to I say tolerates other people's opinions, and there's more to a democracy than just that, 
I mean, there's debate, there's conversations, there's speak about an idea and have reasons behind it. There's a reason you believe in the things that you believe. And people should speak about it. Somebody once told me, actually, if you have to say something, then you've already lost the argument to begin with. And that's incredible. So if you just go out and just beat up, if you're, you know, um, if you're LMPD and you just see a guy walking to the store, you can get out of your car and beat him up. You don't have to say a word. Nah, I'm a cop. I go around beating people up. That's what I do. I don't have to explain myself. Fuck you. That's bullshit. That ain't right. That ain't fair. So I'm not for sure how to exactly go through and figure this out. Because if you have to say it, then you've already lost it. So how do you say it? How do you put these ideas forward? I think you just have to say it and take your licks. The fact that you even have to say some of this stuff is incredible. Chart of the day, global abortion rates. To mark the 39th the anniversary of Roe v. Wade this week, the Gut Mocker Institute has released some insightful data visualizations on abortion rates around the world. Turns out the countries with the more liberal abortion laws actually have fewer abortions. This is amazing. Jack Conway actually says that abortion should be rare, but safe and legal. That's a great response. That's a good response. He also says the first trimester. You got to get the abortion in the first three months. That's okay, too. And then he also, where he goes wrong, though, he says that health insurance should not cover abortions. It should be paid out of pocket. Well, I just now read here the chart of the day, global abortion rates by Kate Shepard. This says that in countries where there are abortions, there are fewer abortions that happen. Where there are liberal abortion laws, fewer abortions happen. And the reason, the explanation they give is because places where there are liberal abortion laws, there's also contraception. There's contraception and there's knowledge and education about sex and about safe sex and about how to use the contraception. Planned Parenthood. The young... Master's ticket is all about pro Planned Parenthood. Pro uh, by being in favor of Planned Parenthood, we will have fewer abortions. And why shouldn't Parenthood be planned? Of course, it should be planned. You're just having kids and you don't even know what you're going to do with them. I mean, you're already lost. Now you're going to put the kid in this lost thing. That that's not fair. And so, pra Planned Parenthood isn't just about abortions. There's many things that Planned Parenthood offers to the public not just contraception but also advice and other medicine so and, and a plan to be a parent how are you going to be a parent you're going to have to feed you're going to have to clothe you're going to have to educate you're going to make sure they got health care there's a lot to being a parent if you're going to be a good parent and you plan and you plan to be a parent look at these countries you got middle africa western africa northern africa south america south eastern asia central america eastern africa caribbean these are all the ones that have high abortion rates and the ones that have low abortion rates um i'm not for sure actually abortion so actually eastern europe has high abortion rates but you see how the line slopes downwards so north america that's us western europe northern europe southern europe southern africa and oceania and actually where the uh, countries where abortion is illegal, I don't even know how they got the statistics for how many abortions there, that were had. But it, 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 regardless, regardless, it just, it makes logical sense. Nobody wants to go out, hey, everybody go get abortion. Abortion's for everybody. No, that, nobody's saying that. We want, everybody wants less abortions. Nobody wants abortions to happen. Nobody wants anybody to get pregnant when they don't want to be pregnant, when they're not ready for or getting raped or, you know, nobody wants that to happen. And so how do you prevent that stuff from happening? Preventive medicine is cheaper than emergency room medicine. And it should be safe and legal. It should be rare, too. So if we're being honest about ourselves, we should cut abortions. I mean, we should, if we're being honest with ourselves, we should keep abortion. It should be rare, but safe and legal. And the argument about the, the third trimester is that when a person comes out, then they are, when, they, when the fetus is viable outside the mother's body, 
That's when it becomes a life. And so that's that's the argument we're, we're faced with. And some people say, well, that's life. No matter what, who cares? God put that in there. I don't know if you could say stuff like that, to be honest with you. So whatever. this It's not whatever. It's very important stuff. This is a right to a woman's body. For some reason, a woman's body has been a part of politics for some reason. Um, the, uh, the Women's bodies have been controlled for many years by men. And a lot of the people who are pro-abortion are usually those men. And so women should have a right to choose. And it's also hypocritical when they are against abortion and then they say that there should be no education, no health care, no anything. I think it's ridiculous. That's not right and that's not fair. So um, abortion should be rare and it should be safe and legal. And uh, health insurance should cover it. That should be something that the health insurance covers. Nobody, I mean, we don't want unwanted pregnancies. And you see that when you make abortion illegal, that's what's going to happen. You're going to have more unwanted pregnancies, and then you're going to have women with coat hangers trying to give an abortion, a late-term abortion by herself in the alley. You're going to have uh, daughters who's in families who's going to be feeling ashamed about it and wanting to, you know, jump off a cliff or something. She'd be confronted with a drastic circumstance. What do I do? Oh my God, what do I do? The Bible says that you should marry your rapist. Is that what these conservatives are saying? You should marry your rapist? You should have your rapist baby? If a person rapes you and impregnates you, then for nine months you got to carry a rapist baby? Because that's what God wanted? I think that's foolish. Guttmacher reports that the rates were high between 29 and 32 abortions per 1,000 women of childbearing age in countries in Africa and Latin America where most abortions are illegal. But the rate was much lower in Western Europe where it's generally legal, averaging 12 per 1,000. The most likely reason for this, of course, is that countries that have legalized abortion are also more likely to have women who are more educated about and have access to various types of contraception, and they are empowered to use it. The takeaway is that draconian restrictions on abortion don't actually ensure that there are fewer abortions, just that the ones that do take place are less safe. And while we're on the subject, read our 2004 piece on life before Roe, the way it was, which I think I will actually read there. So if you're being serious about having you know, less abortions, support Planned Parenthood. If you're being ridiculous about abortions, Here's some list of radio stations in Kentucky. Uh, I, I get a couple of radio stations here, but the, it's very hard to hear. Voter suppression. This is right on the tail. Heels of Selma. Martin Luther King standing up. Taking a stand for voters' rights. And I am going to talk about Japan's debt. But I'm going to do that next time. So let's just recap. Obama's given a million dollars to Eastern Kentuckians. Again, he's given them more money, right? With the ice storm, with the snowstorm, declared emergency give not just Eastern Kentucky, all of Kentucky money. But now, specifically, Eastern Kentucky is getting a billion dollars. And it goes for lots of things. One example is planting trees on old, non-productive sites that were surface mined before 1977. So they're planting trees. They're making it more beautiful. They're helping out the environment. The work could create a significant number of jobs relatively quickly while restoring the environment and building the base for an improved wood products industry. In the long term, says Justin Maxson, president of the Mountain Association for Community Economic Development, who took part in the White House briefing on Obama's proposal. I think it's a huge opportunity for Appalachia, Maxson said, of the budget proposal. The White House said the budget also proposes $20 million in additional spending for programs, including training to help laid off. Miners get back to work. An additional $25 million for the Appalachian Regional Commission to help entrepreneurs in areas affected by the wrenching, uh, wrenching transition in the coal economy. $97 million in grants or loans for infrastructure projects calculated to create jobs in those areas. Yeah, Obama is saving Appalachia. He is saving Appalachia. 
So, I mean, we should have an honest conversation. I'm not, you know, I'm not a, a, a crazy Obama person. I'm not just all about Obama, loving Obama. I'm starting to appreciate him more and more when I hear stupid racist talk, when I hear, you know, someone said Obama was a nigger right here at the, in Garfield at the timber company. Really? The president of the United States, the constitutional professor, community organizer, senator, the president, the most powerful man in the entire world? That's disgusting. It's ridiculous. Racism is here, and racism does need to be an issue, and we do need to speak about racism. The war on drugs is racist. Voter suppression is racist. And don't put that race hustler crap on me. Racism is stupid. It is stupid. You judge somebody by the way they look, by the color of their skin. That's just dumb. I don't even I don't even know how much I mean what what else do you need to say? In some respects it's almost like that what I started out with saying. You don't need to say anything. Racism is stupid. So in addition, the proposal would pump money into the United Mine Workers of America health and pension funds that are underfunded. The plans cover 100,000 mine workers or their families, many of them in Appalachia, according to the White House. And finally, the proposal includes billions in tax credits to push the use of technology at coal-fired power plants to capture carbon dioxide and store it underground or use it. So he's helping laid off miners get back to work. He's planting trees in these decapitated mountains where mountaintop removal, which... Jack Conway is in favor of. Jack Conway is in favor of the Patriot Act, the Iraq War. He's pro Nixon and Reagan's war on drugs. How is he a progressive? How is he a Democrat? He's like barely a Democrat. And if he gets into the general election, he's going to run to the right. He's already running to the right. He said he sued Obama. He's proud of it. And then I sued him. Oh, good job, Jack. Even Rand Paul said that coal is dirty. It's got all that sulfur in it. Like, I, And I'm not even like... Like, I understand that coal and oil is the main sources of energy for our world today. But once coal is depleted and there's no more coal jobs, what are we going to do? Declare more wars to other people's oil. Gaddafi is able to pay for all the services for his people with the oil. And we are a bunch of beggars sitting on a mountain of gold. We got our oil in Kentucky. It's called coal. And this should have made Kentucky rich. Should have made our electricity prices the cheapest in the nation. I'm paying the same price as the rest of the nation. And big surprise. You got some Pennsylvania CEO setting the prices. Of course the coal company should be regulated. You think a bunch of rich people, a bunch of corporations, we know what they want. More for themselves, less for everybody else. Get as much as they can at anybody's expense, no matter what. By any means necessary. Hey man, it's business. It's business. And somehow that justifies any type of crime, any pollution, any cutting of wages and benefits. So I'm glad the United Mine Workers are striking in Catlinsburg. And I hope they get what they want. In fact, I'm almost, I, I'm not anti-corporation because I, you know, I believe we can do capitalism and socialism better. But the corporations have all the power, all the wealth. They're making record profits. And wages are stagnating. And people are losing jobs. We need a healthy, robust middle class. And the way you get a healthy, robust middle class is by investing in the people. Yeah, you want to get corporations in here, but what if you don't get any corporations in here? That means you are just limited, not to any wealthy benefactor, not to some foreign investor, but to the people here in this state. To the land and the resources and the people in this state is all you got. That's all you got. So you develop them. You can have education, job training, real education. Education that empowers people and strengthens people. Entrepreneurship programs, 
right? We saw that Obama's giving money for entrepreneurs, $25 million for the Appalachian Regional Commission. Whoever is running that, who's running the Appalachian Regional Commission? So much corruption and so much bureaucracy. Does this money, does even government money get to the people? So instead of being a bunch of hypocrites, we need to be honest with ourselves. You're taking food stamps, Kentucky. You're taking welfare. You're taking housing programs. You're taking Social Security. You're taking WIC. You're taking LIHEAP. You're taking money. Kentucky has taken more than their fair share. For every dollar that goes to the federal government, a dollar fifty is coming back to us. That's a good deal. And they're doing that because we have poverty and we need to solve the poverty problem. But we don't want to maintain it. We don't want to keep the poverty here. We want to fix this. When we had our aspirations to go to the moon, how long did it take us to get to the moon? Six, seven years? If we were to have the same focus on poverty, especially being a Christian nation, there's churches all over the place. Homeless should find sanctuary in the church or the government. Somebody should be given sanctuary. We love each other. Turn the other cheek. We even love our enemies. No, we don't. We don't even. The homeless aren't our enemies. We don't even love the poor. We, I mean, we have to basically admit that we don't want to do what Jesus said that he, we should do. It's not Christian. It's not being holy. It's not being good. If we focused on poverty, we would have it abolished. We would have poverty cured if we focused on it. And all we need, all we need, we need several things. But what we need, we need an educated population. People are paying attention. People are having these conversations. And we need to step up. And we need to get someplace. That's what we need. We need to have an honest, intelligent conversation. Where we are and where do we want to go? What are the problems and then what are the solutions? That's what we need. So let's be honest with ourselves. Kentucky, we need some honesty. We need some truth. And the truth is, we are a mixed economy. We have capitalist and socialist elements. We are a mixed economy. The salt trucks, the firefighters, the EMS, the road department, all these politicians, all these judges, all these soil and water conservation district supervisors, the bridges, the schools, Hospitals, we should be building hospitals too. But we're not building hospitals. It's all private, privately owned. So we can do, we can have a capitalist socialist system. That makes sense. If we were purely capitalist, if we were purely free market, we would not have a war on drugs. Prostitution would be legal. If we had a true free market, we wouldn't give subsidies and welfare to the corporations because that's what we got right now. Yeah, some people, you know, there's there's some people on food stamps. But if you were to take a, a gander at the money that we actually spend on, we spend it on Social Security, but we also spend it on Empire. We also spend it on a lot of waste. We have socialism. I mean, the big bank bailout, that was socialism for the wealthy. That's what we're faced with, socialism for the wealthy. So is that what we're saying as Kentuckians? Hell no! We don't want our kids to eat. Let's give all the food and clothes and housing and land and all our resources to the big corporations who has their company in Pennsylvania. That'd be a horrible slogan, but that's essentially what we're saying. And I think it's ridiculous and it's time for change. It's time for revolution. Go green, Kentucky.